Hello my dear students and welcome back to Excellence Batch and I am your Diksha ma'am. So here we have started the chapter on human reproduction and in the previous class we have talked about the male reproductive system and its function. So in the previous class we have done the structure of penis, ejaculation, erection and disorders. So it's time to move further and talk about a little technical things now. So today we are going to cover the spermatogenesis. But before the, the starting this topic spermatogenesis, let's talk about gametogenesis. What is gametogenesis? Gameto means gametes. What are gametes? The sperm and ova. And genesis means formation. So the formation of gametes or the process of formation of gametes is known as gametogenesis. So what I have just said, what is gametogenesis? It is the process of formation of gametes. Since we are human and we are unisexual, we have one male and other female. So female produces female gametes and male produces male gametes. So we have two types of gametes guys. One are the male, another are the female gamete. The male gamete is known as sperm or spermatozoa. Whereas the female gamete is known as ovum or egg or ooted. So that's the name for female gamete. Fine. So the process of formation of sperm is spermatogenesis. Whereas process of formation of key female gamete ovum is oogenesis. You got my point. So gametogenesis is the term used for both of them. Gametogenesis, formation of gamete. Now, if I am talking about which gamete, the male gamete, then I will be using term spermatogenesis. So, what is spermatogenesis? Spermatogenesis is formation of male gamete. And what is that male gamete, guys? It has its name here also, sperms. What is Oogenesis then, oogenesis is formation of female gamete, is formation of female gamete. And what is a female gamete? Ova. Now as you all know, the male and female both are quite different. You all know, yeah, right? So especially when the male and female they got mature they hit puberty they got entirely different okay so definitely if their body physiology if their body function body structures some structures they are different then the formation of gametes will also be little different so most of the pattern is same but there are little differences in the spermatogenesis and oogenesis. So today we will be covering only formation of male gamete. Why not female? Because we have not done female reproductive system yet. Okay. So now we are going to start with the spermatogenesis. So spermatogenesis starts during puberty. Spermatogenesis starts at puberty. What is puberty? The puberty is a particular time period of adolescence when you reach around 12 to 13 years of age, your hormones are very higher, your reproductive systems are quite mature. Earlier before that your reproductive structures were not mature, which reproductive structure like in male testes, the duct system, the external genitalia, they were not quite mature. But now due to surge of the hormones. Which hormone does male have? Testosterone. So due to surge of that hormones, the male reproductive structures are now quite developed and mature and they are ready to perform their function. And what's the function? The function of the testes or testicle is to produce gametes because that's the primary reproductive organ. So this process of spermatogenesis in male, it starts at puberty. Why? Because at that time, the level of hormone rises. The level of hormones rises. We will also be discussing how the hormones plays a vital role in spermatogenesis in much detail. 
but before we'll see how the process of spermatogenesis works okay another thing where does spermatogenesis takes place so spermatogenesis takes place in the testes which part of testes you all know there are one two three in each testicular lobule seminiferous tubule so spermatogenesis takes place in seminiferous tubules in seminiferous tubules of testes okay yes so if you remember we have drawn a structure of seminiferous tubule and we have also you know uh, 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 drawn different types of cells of different stages so we are going to talk about them in detail so let's get started with the process so if you remember if you remember we have this cuboidal cells cuboidal cells in the seminiferous tubule and these cuboidal cells they were considered as germ cells they were considered as germ cells so there is a lining cuboidal cell lining or epithelial lining present in the seminiferous tubule you call it as germinal epithelium what you call it as germinal epithelium so this epithelium undergo mitosis it undergo mitosis the cells of this epithelium undergoes mitosis and form germ mother cells what do they form germ mother cells also known as spermatogonia so when these cells of germinal epithelium they undergo mitosis they will by mitosis they will keep on producing a number of small cells and the name of these cells are germ mother cells or spermatogonia spermatogonia or germ mother cells germ mother cells so if i talk about the ploidy you understand what is a ploidy the number of chromosome these are diploid these cells they are diploid they are 2n they have total 46 chromosome which we can also write as 23 all right which we can write as 44 plus xy not 23 that's different i'll let you know later so this is diploid and total chromosomes are 46 and if we will separate autosomes and sex chromosome in a male we have xy chromosome in females for example if i'm a female my cells will be containing xx because it's spermatogenesis these are the cells of a male the chromosome will be sex chromosome will be x and y so 44 45 46 total are 46 and that's diploid condition and these cells are formed via division you call it as mitosis what you call it as mitosis now out of these cell one cell will be selected one cell will be selected every time and that will undergo differentiation that cell will undergo differentiation you understand what is differentiation a type of a maturation a type of a maturation so out of one spermatogonia out of one spermatogonia uh, you know sorry out of a lot of spermatogonia one spermatogonia will be selected that will become bigger in size it will undergo differentiation and maturation it will become bigger in size it will have a lot of cytoplasm and you will call this cell as primary spermatocyte primary spermatocyte primary spermatocyte is also deployed just like that of your spermatogonia nothing has happened right now no meiosis has happened okay now because this cell is quite bigger it has a lot of cytoplasm this cell will now undergo first meiosis this cell will undergo first meiosis you all know meiosis 1 is a reductional division and by reductional means it will make the chromosome half or it will uh, you know half the ploidy it will make from diploid to haploid condition so this cell after undergoing meiosis 1 it will be converted into two cells it will be converted into two cells and both the cells they will be known as secondary spermatocyte secondary spermatocyte 
and secondary spermatocyte because meiosis 1 has taken place which is reductional division the ploidy has been changed this has become n this has also become n so if i have the 46 it has 46 chromosome right or i can say 44 plus xy now the chromosome have been divided into two so it will be containing total 23 chromosome and this will also be containing okay let me write it here 23 chromosome it will also be containing 23 okay so now separate the autosomes and sex chromosome you can also write it like it contains 22 plus x and this one contains 22 plus y okay you got it so it's haploid it contains total 23 chromosome that can be 22 plus this one for example contains x chromosome this one contains y chromosome okay now secondary spermatocyte it will undergo meiosis 2 and meiosis 2 is equational division it is equational division now no more ploidy will be half rather rather two more cells will be formed and these are known as spermatids these are known as spermatids for example this one forms two cell this one forms two cell so similarly this will be 22 plus x 22 plus x 22 plus y and 22 plus y so spermatids are also haploid secondary spermatocyte was haploid spermatid is also haploid primary spermatocyte was diploid this was diploid this is the most common question asked guys most common question asked right now this spermatid this is not the end we have to make sperms now this spermatid will, un will undergo a lot of changes spermatid is a very large huge normal cell with single nucleus lot of cytoplasm in it but we want to convert them into a different shape structure a different you know looking cell you call them as sperms right so spermatid gets converted into these small structures small, small cell like structures which are sperms or spermatozoa so the journey from spermatid to sperm is quite different from these and it's quite amazing and it is quite difficult also spermatid which is a round cell like structure it has to get converted into these motile cells known as sperms and the process of formation of sperm listen to me very carefully every year the question is asked in fact in fact in 2020 also this question was asked right uh, from this topic so if i'm saying the spermatid is forming sperm then the process will be known as spermiogenesis so the formation of sperm from spermatid formation of sperm from the spermatid is known as spermiogenesis spermiogenesis you got my point no okay so this is a spermatid this is a spermatid spermatid has to convert it into this cell like structure known as sperm known as sperm so you can see how these two cells are different to, e to each other right so the process of conversion of sperm from the spermatid is known as spermiogenesis okay now after the sperm is formed it the sperm is a lover of sertoli cell you remember sertoli cell the cell that nourishes sperm the cells that nourishes sorry nourishes sperm so this was your seminiferous tubule this was your seminiferous tubule okay in the seminiferous tubule we have these long tall cells known as sertoli cell known as sertoli cell after the sperm is formed from spermatid the sperm will attach to the sertoli cell or we can say the head of sperm gets attached to the sertoli cell after spermatid has been converted into sperm the sperm will rush towards the tolly cell and it will embed its head on it and it will derive all the nourishment after it is ready after taking nourishment it is ready the sperm after it gets ready and mature it will start going towards the lumen this is a lumen portion this portion is lumen 
Lumen is the hollow surface because this is here a lot of cells are there and this portion is lumen. Okay. So, after the sperms are completely formed, they will now start leaving the head of Sertoli cell. So, this process, this process where the sperm, uh, where the sperms are getting detached from the Sertoli cell is known as permeation. What do you call it as? Spermiation. What is permeation guys? This is very important. Pay attention here. Spermiation is a process where sperms gets detached from the Sertoli cell and enters the lumen and enters the lumen. Fine. So, formation of sperm from spermatid is spermiogenesis. After the sperm is formed, what it will do? The sperm head will attach to Sertoli cell. You got my point, right? And after that, if it is done, mature, taken nourishment, it will leave the Sertoli cell and it will enter towards the lumen. Fine, and that process is permeation. All right. So let's uh, revise this one more time. First of all, there is a germinal epithelium in the seminiferous tubule. These are cuboidal cell, and these cell they will keep on dividing, and they will form by mitosis these spermatogonia or germ mother cell, which are diploid. Now, one of these spermatogonia will be selected every time, it will undergo differentiation, it will get mature, it has a lot of cytoplasm, bigger in size, you can see how the difference is and it will become primary spermatocyte and this is the one selected for formation of sperm because it has or it is rich in cytoplasm. It is diploid, it has 46 chromosome just like that of spermatogonia because no meiosis has taken place yet. Now, the primary spermatocyte will undergo meiosis 1, which is reductional division and form 2 secondary spermatocyte, which has now uh, the ploidy have been halved, right. So, it is n, n or you can also say it has 23 chromosome, 23 chromosome or you can also say 22 plus x and 22 plus y. Similarly, here uh, from uh, the secondary spermatocyte, meiosis 2 will take place and spermatids will be formed. These are again round cell like uh, structures and they also have the n ploidy and from x 2x will be formed and from this y1 22 plus y 22 plus y will be formed. Similarly, from spermatid the sperms will be formed after a lot of changes. What changes occur? We will be talking about that shortly. Okay. Now, process of formation of sperm from the spermatid is known as spermiogenesis. After spermiogenesis, the sperm will now get attached to the Sertoli cell with the help of its head. The sperm's, this structure is head. Okay. It will get attached to Sertoli cell, derive all the nourishment. After it has derived all the nourishment and has get mature enough, it will now leave the, leave the Sertoli cell and it will now move towards the lumen and then it will move outside and you know the pathway then, retitestes, uh, tubular recti, retitestes, vas afferentia, epididymis, then vas deferens, ejaculatory duct, urethra and to the outside during ejaculation and causes insemination in the female. This is what we have done in the previous lectures. Alright, so what is permeation or spermiogenesis? How they are different? In spermiogenesis, we are producing sperm from spermatid. Genesis means producing, okay, synthesis. So we are producing sperm from where? Spermatid. Spermiation, the sperms are completely form mature and they are now leaving the seminiferous tubule, okay. Alright, now let us talk about the structure of the sperm, but before that, let us see this what is given in NCRT, okay. All right. So, first of all, very important question that I want to ask you here uh, and also it was asked in the NEE 2022 also. F uh, sometimes what we do, we keep on focusing on the content of the NCRT and we sometimes do not, you know, uh, read the tables and diagrams very carefully. So, the question was on differentiation. So, if you can see here carefully, differentiation occurs or the maturation occurs twice as I have told you. The maturation occurs twice. One differentiation occurs here 
and second differentiation here okay so differentiation is a very important step in the spermatogenesis without differentiation your sperms will not be formed first differentiation takes place for the formation of primary spermatocyte second differentiation in the formation of spermatozoa all right so whatever changes are occurring where i am using the word mature mature means differentiation only okay so do pay attention here so where does differentiation takes place at two places guys at two places one here second here or i will write it down here how does it takes place via differentiation that's why i brought that uh, particular table of ncrt now let's read this also at puberty you can see spermatogonia are there they are undergoing mitosis producing a lot out of them one gets mature and forms form the primary spermatocyte which undergo meiosis first meiotic division and form the uh, secondary spermatocyte okay so this was spermatogonia undergone differentiation produce the primary spermatocyte this primary spermatocyte later on form the secondary spermatocyte now it undergo meiosis to and form spermatids spermatid forms the sperm and here the ploidy is written okay so this we can also write 44 plus xy this is uh, 22 plus x or 22 plus y and the same 22 plus x or 22 plus y so how many types of sperms first question i am writing questions here very important question uh, first is steps where differentiation occur this is one already we have covered there are two steps where differentiation occurs okay second how many types of sperms are formed how many types of sperms are formed if someone ask you if someone is a male how many types of sperm a male can form now you must be thinking ma'am types really two types see one type will have 22 plus x chromosome other will have 22 plus y so there are two categories two types right so males can produce two types of gametes fine right? two types of sperms now second question how many sperms are formed how many sperms are formed from one germ cell germ mother cell or better primary spermatocyte this is how you can also write primary or a primary spermatocyte how many can we form four so we can produce four sperms there was just one primary spermatocyte and it has produced four gametes so that's why the number of gametes per ejaculation in male is higher female release only one egg but male per ejaculation releases number of sperm to ensure fertility okay because it has to meet ova and if the number is less the probability of fertilization will be less if the number is more the probability of fertilization will be simply more okay so that's about the uh, diagram of ncrt let's draw the structure of sperm structure of sperm all right now as i've told you the spermatid is a round cell like structure it's a round cell like structure but it has been converted into a very small motile gamete known as sperm now what changes have occurred in the formation of sperm first of all it has not big uh, it is not like a regular cell it has entirely changed its shape so if you will see the structure of a sperm or if you have already seen somewhere in the book it has head a small neck middle piece and a tail portion so the entire structure of sperm has been divided into first head second a very little neck third middle piece and the last tail okay now why nature has made it so weird see nature never make weird things the things are made due to the result of their existence and their function for example we want our cell to be motile so for that we need to give it a tail so when a sperm is formed from spermatid it loses things a lot of things and it only keeps things which are essential which are important 
For example, if I say during fertilization, female cytoplasm is important, male cytoplasm is not that important. So during maturation or differentiation from spermatid to sperm, the sperm loses its cytoplasm. So the first very important point is here, the sperm loses cytoplasm. The sperm loses cytoplasm. It loses its cytoplasm. This is a very important point. Second thing, second thing, the structure has been divided into various parts. If second thing, in the head, you will see a very large structure, elongated structure known as nucleus. In fact, the nucleus also has undergone a lot of changes. The nucleus have become highly compact. So second feature of a sperm is that it has a very highly compact nucleus because the major, uh, you know, um, change that nature wants is to reduce its size because if it will be little, you can accommodate more. If they are larger, it will be very difficult. Second, if they would be larger, they will not be motile. You know, larger things are very, you know, difficult to move. So that's why we needed a smaller uh, structure. For that, we need to compact things. Okay. Now, all the Golgi body comes at this anterior end and form this cap-like structure known as acrosome or acrosomal cap. Acrosome or acrosomal cap. This is formed by, as I've told you, by Golgi bodies. This is formed by the collection of Golgi bodies. A lot of Golgi bodies, the same Golgi bodies you study in botany cell. So a lot of Golgi bodies, they form a cluster and they form this cap-like structure known as acrosome. Now why it is present here and what's, why it's important? It contains digesting enzymes, ovums, membrane digesting enzyme. Ovum's membrane digesting enzyme. Ma'am, what is this? Okay. So, whenever sperm fertilizes the ovum, sperm enters inside the ovum. And to enter inside the ovum, it need to digest its wall. For example, there is a room and room has no door. And you have to enter the room. What will you do? You will break the wall. So, for breaking the wall, you need some instruments. Just like that, enzymes are those instruments that will digest the wall and they will, it will allow the sperm to enter. And that is present in this portion of head, the anterior portion of head known as acrosome. So third important feature that a sperm has is acrosome. Okay, and what is this? This is a nucleus. And it has a very less or you can say negligible cytoplasm very negligible or less cytoplasm and it do has a plasma membrane. It do has a plasma membrane. Okay, then come to neck portion. In the neck portion, we have one pair. You hear me right? We have one pair. Okay, we have one pair of centriol. The centriol which is present near to the nucleus is proximal centriol, is proximal centriol, this one. Proximal always means near. You must have heard of proximal convoluted tubule PCT. It is present near the Bowman's capsule, so that's why its name is proximal. Distal means away, so this is distal centriol. The proximal centriol and nucleus are the only two structure. Hear me again. Proximal centriol and nucleus are the only two structure that completely enters the ova. Other structures, they come out. Only two structures are essential for fertilization. One is proximal centriol, another is nucleus. So only these two structures, they enter inside the ovum during fertilization. Or we can say they are very important for fertilization. Why? If the nucleus is there, ovum is also haploid, this is also haploid, they will become diploid and we are diploid. Okay. Now, proximal centriol is important because ovum only have one centriol. 
and if you know we need two centriole to complete mitosis. Have you done cell division? Yes. So, in cell division when the spindle fibers are separating there are two poles and for two poles centrioles are responsible for that, right. But if you have only one pole, can you separate these fibers? You cannot, right. No, no metaphasic plate, no spindle fibers. So, that is why we need two centriole. So, centriole and nucleus they enters inside the ovum during fertilization. I will also be telling you this when we will be doing fertilization. Now, what is the role of distal centriole? It produces axial filaments of tail. It produces axial filament of tail. So, this tail is completely made up of axial filament that arises from distal centriole like this. Okay? And these filaments they are very much important for movement. Now, there is a question of motility and movement. There is a question of motility and movement. Because we need motility movement, we will be needing energy and which is the powerhouse of the cell, mitochondria. So, M for middle piece, M for mitochondria. This middle piece have around more than like 30, 30 to 40 mitochondria arranged in this spiral form, arranged in this spiral form. So, these are spirally arranged mitochondria and you all know why that is important. Uh, why mitochondria is important? They are for energy and this spirally coi coiled mitochondria have a name known as Neben kern and they are for energy. They provide energy for motility. Alright and that is tail. What is the function of tail guys? Tail helps in motility. Okay. So, that is the detailed structure of the sperm. All right. Now, let us talk about the hormonal control. Hormonal control of spermatogenesis. What does hormone do here? Or what is the role of hormones in controlling the formation of sperms. As I have told you, after puberty, we are a lot of sexual organs, our sexual activities are controlled by our hormones. Now, how does hormone play an important role? So, we have an organ guys and the name of the organ is hypothalamus. Hypothalamus. Have you ever heard of hypothalamus? No. Really? Hypothalamus is a very important part of your brain and it is also an endocrine body. So, it will secrete hormones. So, when you hit puberty at that time your hypothalamus judges that your uh, uh, entire body organs have been developed, right, the male reproductive structure. And due to influence of other uh, external factors also, hypothalamus starts secreting the hormone GnRH. Its full form is gonadotropin releasing hormone. What is its full form? Gonadotropin releasing hormone. So, this hormone it goes to another gland which is present below hypothalamus and the name of the gland is pituitary gland. Now, this pituitary gland secretes two hormones under the influence of GnRH. It produces two hormones. One is FSH, another is LH. LH is luteinizing hormone. Okay. Luteinizing hormone. In males, in males, there is another name for LH that is ICSH, interstitial cell, interstitial cell stimulating hormone. So, from its name you must have guessed that it stimulates interstitial cell. What are interstitial cells? Ladic cells. The Leydig cells are present in the interstitial spaces, the spaces between seminiferous tubule and they secrete the hormone androgen. So, when GnRH comes from hypothalamus, it asks pituitary gland to secrete this hormone and this hormone will 
go to which cell? Leydig cell. So, it stimulate Leydig cell. And Leydig cell on its stimulation will secrete the hormone testosterone. So, testosterone helps in spermatogenesis. So, yes, spermatogenesis is not just happening itself. It needs certain motivation. It needs certain stimulation. And whenever you have higher amount of testosterone in body, it gives negative feedback to hypothalamus as well as to pituitary gland. What does this negative feedback mean? Anything when it is at higher amount, it will start telling the glands which are controlling it to not to release it. If in case male have higher amount of testosterone in the blood, it will tell hypothalamus and pituitary not to secrete their hormones because if they will secrete the hormone, the testosterone will be more secreted and we don't want to do that. On the other hand, FSH is follicle stimulating hormone. What is the another cell important cell of male? Sertoli cell. So, this one it stimulates Sertoli cell. It stimulates Sertoli cell and you all know Sertoli cell also have a function of spermatogenesis. How it is doing that uh, maturation of sperm, right? So, it also helps in or it also controls spermatogenesis. Also, one interesting point to note here, Sertoli cell secretes a hormone inhibin. Whenever Sertoli cell have a lot of sperm on its surface, Sertoli cell in a way is getting a signal that number of sperms have been formed. For example, Sertoli cells have been overcrowded. So that means number of sperms are formed, we don't need to form a lot of sperms. So at that time, Sertoli cell will produce inhibin and inhibin will also give negative feedback to pituitary gland for FSH, for FSH. So inhibin always give negative feedback to pituitary gland for which hormone? For FSH, right guys? So this is how the entire hormones are also controlling the process of spermatogenesis. Let me tell you one more time. Hypothalamus is the organ, endocrine organ secreting the hormone GnRH which will stimulate the another gland, pituitary gland. Pituitary gland on the other hand will secrete two hormones FSH and LH. LH is also known as ICSH in females, uh, sorry in males because it stimulates interstitial cells also known as Leydig cells and they will in return secrete the hormone testosterone. Testosterone can give negative feedback to both hypothalamus and pituitary gland so that it can control its secretion. On other hand FSH stimulate which cell? Sertoli cell and Sertoli cell can control spermatogenesis and if the sperms are so much it will secrete this inhibin hormone which will give negative feedback to pituitary for FSH. Definitely write here FSH, surely write FSH because it gives negative feedback to FSH only. Right guys? Okay. <clears throat> so that's about hormonal control. Let's read the NCRT. So, we'll start from here and it's a long, long paragraph. So, stay with me. Open your NCRT books. The primary sex organ, the testes in the males and the ovaries in the female produce gametes, that is sperms and ovum, respectively by the process called gametogenesis. In testes, the immature male germ cells, what are the immature male germ cells? Spermatogonia produce sperms by spermatogenesis that begins at puberty. First question from this line, when does the spermatogenesis starts? Puberty. What are male germ cells known as? Spermatogonia. Spermatogonia, singular is spermatogonium, present on the wall of seminiferous vestibule, multiply by which division? Mitotic division and increase in number. Each spermatogonium is diploid and contain how many chromosome? 46. Some of the spermatogonia called primary spermatocyte periodically undergo meiosis. A primary spermatocyte completes first meiotic division which is reductional, leading to formation of two equal haploid cells called secondary spermatocyte. If you have seen, we have drawn equal size of cell. I have never drawn one larger, another smaller. You can see the size are always equal. So, you can guess here, right? They are equal in size. <clears throat> and have how many chromosome? 23. The secondary spermatocyte undergoes a second meiotic division to produce four equal 
haploid spermatid. What would be the number of chromosomes in the spermatid? Very simple 23 plus x or 23 plus y. The spermatids are transformed into spermatozoa or sperm by the process called spermiogenesis. After spermiogenesis, sperm head becomes embedded in the Sertoli cell and are finally released from the seminiferous tubule by the process called spermiation. Now that is a paragraph for hormone control. Spermatogenesis start at the age of puberty due to significant increase in which hormone guys? Gonadotropin releasing hormone. This is I have told that when the hypothalamus judges it will release GnRH. If you recall the hypothalamic hormone, the increased level of GnRH then act at the anterior pituitary. So if you have uh, read the endocrine chapter chemical control and coordination. So pituitary gland are of two types or it has two parts, not types, it has two parts, anterior and posterior. Posterior only stores the hormone. So when hypothalamus secrete GnRH, it does not stimulate posterior, it stimulates anterior pituitary okay and stimulates the secretion of two gonadotropins luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone. If you do not know what is a gonadotropin I am letting you know otherwise you must have done in chemical control also LH plus FSH they both work on gonads. What are gonads? Testes and ovaries. So they are known as gonadotropins. Right? And this hormone secreted by hypothalamus is releasing gonadotropins. So, its name is gonadotropin releasing hormone. Okay. Okay. LH acts at the Leydig cell and stimulates and synthesis and secretion of androgen. What is androgen? Testosterone. Androgen in turn stimulate the process of spermatogenesis. FSH acts on Sertoli cell and stimulates secretion of some factors which helps in the process of spermiogenesis. So we have written spermatogenesis but you know better what step in spermatogenesis uh, you know Sertoli cells are involved in that is spermiogenesis formation of only sperm okay because it comes at end. Now let us see the structure of the sperm that we have drawn also. So sometime the diagram whenever there is a diagrammatic question in exam they always ask you diagram from NCRT. So that is why I always say look at the diagrams very carefully. Let us examine the structure of sperm. It is a microscopic structure composed of a head, neck, middle piece and tail. A plasma membrane envelops the whole body of the sperm. So as I have told you there is a plasma membrane all over the body. The sperm head contains an elongated nucleus. Obviously it is haploid. Anterior portion of it is covered by cap like structure known as acrosome or acrosomal cap. Acrosome is filled with enzyme that helps the fertilization of ovum, helping in penetrating. The middle piece possesses numerous mitochondria which produce energy for the movement of tail that facilitates sperm motility essential for fertilization. And what is the role of tail? Movement. And who gives energy? Mitochondria. So this is we have already done in previous class. How much sperms is there in males ejaculation? 200 to 300. Out of it 60% should have normal shape and size and out of that 40% should have vigorous motility. Sperm released from the seminiferous tubule are transported by the accessory ducts. Secretion of epididymis, vast deferens, seminal vesicles and prostate are essential for maturation and motility of sperm. The seminal plasma along with the sperm constitute semen. The function of male accessory duct and glands are maintained by testicular hormone androgen. This is all we have done in the previous class. What is a semen? What is the role of ducts? And, uh, uh, and how does uh, testosterone have various roles? It helps in development of all the sexual characters and organs. Fine guys. So that is about the NCRT. So it is time to solve certain questions. Mark the correct answer. For normal fertility at least 60% of sperm must show vigorous motility. Primary spermatocyte undergoes meiosis 1 to form secondary spermatocyte. <coughs> one oogonium produces 4 functional ova. Sertoli cells secrete inhibin which inhibits LH synthesis. Very simple question. You can do it like in one go. First is incorrect because 40 percent should have motility, 60 should have proper shape and size. This is true primary undergoes meiosis 1 and forms secondary. One oogonium produces only one ova, we will be doing that in the next classes, so that is wrong. 
in fact one primary spermatocyte produces four sperms ok. So, Tolly cell secrete inhibin that inhibits FSH. So, answer to this question will be 2. Next, spermatids are transformed into spermatozoa by the process of spermiogenesis, permeation, spermatogenesis, sperma, spermatolysis. Very simple. Spermatid, spermatid is converted into sperms. What do you call it as? Spermiogenesis. Answer is 1. Okay, next. Spermiogenesis is also known as spermatiliosis. That's the another name. Okay, next. Which of the following represents the correct number of chromosomes in various cells that are mentioned below? So, straight away in your mind have an image that spermatogonia and primary spermatocyte, they both are diploid. Rest everything is haploid. Okay, so spermatogonia is diploid, primary spermatocyte is diploid, secondary is haploid, spermatozoa is haploid. So diploid will have 46 chromosome, will have 46. So this is not the 46, this is 46 but this is not 46, same with this, okay. So 23 pairs is 46, 23 pairs is 46, 23 and 23, answer is D. Great, you can do it. <laughs> Next. Study the follow, following chart given below. In context to the below mentioned flow chart, which of the following is correct about, about W, X, Y and Z? So, this is the most common question that is asked, right? So, here uh, hypothalamus secrete hormone GnRH. Before reading this, always fill it yourself first, okay? Which will go to anterior pituitary, which will secrete FSH, which will stimulate Sertoli cell, LH, which will stimulate interstitial cell. And Sertoli cell secrete inhibin that give negative feedback, okay. And interstitial secrete androgen or testosterone. Now do it. So we will start from W. So W is inhibin. We have inhibin here, here. And what is X? X is testosterone or androgen. This is also true. Whereas Y is GnRH, it is written GHRH. So, pay attention. It is growth hormone releasing hormone. This is gonadotropin releasing hormone and Z is FSH. Okay. So, answer is 1. Next. Study the chart and identify A to E. Alright. Again, that is a similar kind of a chart but little different. That is why I have brought both of them. So, here again we will do the same process. First, we will write it down and then we will find the options. Okay. So, hypothalamus secretes the hormone GnRH. It secretes the hormone GnRH. Okay. So, here in A, they have written the gland. So, sometimes you need to see. You need to see the things carefully. So, A here is a gland and that is anterior pituitary. And if you know guys, anterior pituitary also have another name, adenohypophysis. It is also known as adenohypophysis if you remember chemical control and coordination chapter. Okay. Now, this anterior pituitary, where it will go? This anterior pituitary, where it will go? It will go nowhere. It will release hormone. <laughs> it will release two hormone. One is ICSH, which is LH. It is already written. So, definitely another will be FSH. Okay. Now, FSH, it will go to which cell? It will go to Sertoli cell. And Sertoli cell will release the hormone inhibin. Okay. And this one will go to which cell? Ladic cell or interstitial cell. Let's do it then. A is adenohypophysis, not neuro. So, this one do have. B is FSH, not LH. And C, C is a Sertoli cell. And D is a Ladic cell and E is inhibit. So, sometimes you just need to see the options also. It is not like you will just go blindly. So, I have given you both the formats and I hope you understand that sometimes you need to process your mind. <laughs> All right, guys. Next is which of the following statement is incorrect? Spermiation occurs before spermiogenesis. Spermatogenesis starts at the age of puberty. Primary spermatocyte undergoes meiosis. Each spermatogonium is diploid and contains 46 chromosomes. Let's start from here. Each spermatogonium is diploid and contains 46 chromosomes. Very true. It is 2N. Primary spermatocyte is the one that undergoes meiosis. This is also true. Spermatogenesis also starts at puberty. So, it is true. But spermiation never occur before spermiogenesis. First spermiogenesis occur, then spermiation occur. Spermiogenesis, formation of sperm. Spermiation, release of sperm from Sertoli cell. Okay. 
All right. So that's it about the very important topics for metagenesis and please focus on this topic, read it very nicely, revise things again and again because this is important from need point of view and I'm telling you again and again because every year the questions are asked from this topic guys, okay. All right, my dear students, I'll meet in the next class. We'll be discussing about female reproductive system. Till then, buckle up, revise it and meet me again. Bye-bye.